Catherine Mills, a cyborg who works for Harbinger Corporation, receives unusual information concerning their Model SAR multi-arm class, which has a reprogramming anomaly, from the Harbinger I training facility, which is an undisclosed military training island. Captain Damien Books requests a report from one of his troops, Drifter, while on duty at a military installation. He informs him that the others are waiting for them at the strip because they have orders to join a training. Books is displeased with the news, and he observes Mills sitting close. He approaches the soldier in command, inquiring about it because his team has already been in training four times. He informs him that the job is only for two days, and they are looking for combat experienced marines. Because few of them are left, his squad must do it, and Books has little option. In the meantime, Captain Books and the rest of his squad, comprising Drifter, Sergeant Rory Robinson, Corporal Robert Cutbill, Lance Corporal Martin Goodwin, Corporal Daniela Hackett, and Corporal Sam Loftus, meet with Mills. These individuals are now participating in a two-day training assignment at Harbinger I. Books and Mills are conversing with one another about Harbinger sending her to witness how they train and investigate the reprogramming anomaly of the hardware in the field. On their way to the island, the crew does not hide the fact that they do not trust her. Not only because she is not a member of their group, but she will also be the face of their future work. However, she is not the only one who has improved. Books gives the troops basic instructions as they approach the spot, reminding them that they are carrying live ammo and that someone will be watching them. Mills realizes that she can no longer connect to the global network. As a result, she must switch to the one closest to her. Robinson informs Books that she has tools in her hands that resemble those in his eyes. Books, on the other hand, tells him that he does not go onto his brain. On the other hand, the squad begins training, and they are surprised to realize that there are self-contained surveillance drones. Then they go about their business, and while doing it, they encounter a robot, so they disperse their troops to eliminate the threat posed by the AI. The squad easily wins the first combat since they can kill AI drones from where they are currently standing. On the other hand, Mills feels a pull toward something, so she decides to follow one of the surveillance drones and locate an advanced SAR unit that has been resting for some time. Mills cannot communicate with the SAR unit since she cannot access the net when suddenly it comes to life and begins uploading loads of data to her, but because she can't absorb it all at once, she only gets quick flashes and pictures of slaughtered troops wailing in agony. After their first training day, the gang goes to their makeshift camp to discuss what transpired. While Mills is still attempting to figure out how to utilize the SAR equipment she discovered earlier, Drifter approaches her and offers her a cup of coffee. Drifter tells her that they cannot reach anyone then she informs him that the network is local and that she has no idea what is preventing them from sending messages, but she is currently investigating the issue. They then discuss how Books doesn't like her, leading them to discuss their pasts. Drifter asks Mills how old she was when she got chipped. Then Mills reveals having paralysis and that Harbinger saved her life by chipping her when she was 11 years old. Drifter returns to talk to Books and relays the information he got from Mills. Books then tells Drifter that something is off with Mills and their training because he has never experienced losing communication with their families and the outside world. A drone comes to Loftus, a post guard, in the middle of the night while the crew rest. When the drone takes off, he notices a weird sound and immediately pursues it. He sees the SAR unit with multiple arms and begins firing, which awakens the rest of the crew. Books investigates and asks Cutbill, who sees Loftus standing and then suddenly disappears. So the group starts searching for Lotus and finds traces of blood, leading them to the lifeless body of Loftus. Drifter immediately asks Mills about what is happening, who soon realizes they are back at the location of their first encounter. Hackett is killed by numerous gunshots as soon as another drone arrives at her location. As soon as the robots begin shooting at them, Books recognizes that they have taken up a position at the original vantage point the team had. After using flash bombs to render the robots unable to see, they started firing upon them. When Books finally has a clear shot at the robots, he fires at them, which causes the robots to fall back. During the firefight, Cutbill gets separated from the team when another drone comes, and he shoots at them. After a while, the SAR unit locates him, and another robot shoots him in the head to kill him. On the other hand, Robinson looks for Cutbill but does not find him, only his helmet. They continue their search for Cutbill, and while doing so, Drifter tries to persuade Books that Mills can assist them in their situation by claiming that Mills is the only person who can see them on the field pads and through the woods, but Books disagrees with Drifter's viewpoint. Following that, they discover all the dead deer, which they believe are all used as targets, just like the way Loftus trains. 
During their conversation, Mills senses something is tracking them from the ridge, then the drones attack the group again, and Books and Mills get separated from Drifter, Robinson, and Goodwin. It is starting to get dark when Books finds a location to hold up while waiting for Mills to wake up after colliding with a tree and losing consciousness during the attack by the drones. Later that night, the drones spot their location, and they immediately hide. When the SAR unit arrives, it connects to Mills and leaves immediately. The following day, Mills wakes up after being unconscious for nine hours. Books then explains what happened to her when the SAR unit came close to them, but Mills still has no idea what is happening. Later, they reunite with their group, return to the drop point, and wait for their transportation. Mills says they need her to open the gate, so Drifter asks Books to help her get there. When they get to the gate, Books tries but fails to open it, so he seeks Mills' assistance in dealing with the matter. Mills attempts to open it when the team gets smoked, and the robots open fire. The SAR unit shoots Drifter and pins him down. Mills, on the other hand, after she unlocks the gate, immediately runs into the middle of the chaos and connects to the drones. Although she is able to control them, she fails on the SAR unit and denies her access. The SAR unit is about to cut Drifter open, so Books is forced to kill him as a coup de grace before the SAR unit can. As soon as the team escapes the barrier complex, Mills begins to argue with Books and the rest of the team that she could have saved Drifter and that they shouldn't have killed him, but Robinson pulls a gun on her and stops her. Books continues asking Mills why they are in that place, to which Mills answers that she does not know because the Marines are the ones who train there, but his team is requested. She also explains that she is there because she writes the program, designs the prototypes, and tests them in the training field. The team continues interviewing her, and they wonder why the hazardous robots are not shooting at her. She explains that the programs have changed and soon reveals that these robots are to replace soldiers. Mills says they are called SAR, which stands for Study, Analyze, and Reprogram. These units, like humans, will learn and adapt themselves upon observing the soldiers. She adds that they created these robots to preserve lives so troops will not have to kill others or lose their own while performing their duties. Because robots are following them as they are on their way out, they must exit through an alternate door. They discover more units that aren't operating and see dead workers, making them believe that the AI killed all of them. Meanwhile, Mills can still not communicate with the outside, so she decides to go to the SAR units and activate one of them to understand their new program. She believes she will be able to learn what they know since the robots share the same information, and once the unit goes online, she can connect and control them. Upon Mills' communication with the unit, she finds out that the SAR unit attacking them, SAR-003, is their guardian SAR and has reprogrammed the AI because the human training does not perform as expected, so to improve their motivation, they will train with live ammunition. She also discovers that the AI has urged the soldiers to proceed to Harbinger I independently. While the team plans to escape through the back door, SAR-003 and a few other units break past the barrier door where they are holding up. The crews plan to slow them down and, if possible, destroy some of them by planting explosives is successful. After the explosion, they are able to escape the robots but land on what appears to be another training facility. Later, Mills finds a detonated electromagnetic pulse device, it can disable the original SAR unit, but it can also kill her or wipe her mind clean. While checking the area of their new location, they find out the fake soldiers the AIs used for training, and when they ran out of those, they moved over to real soldiers. Because they only have a few rounds of ammunition left, Books, Mills, Robinson, and Goodwin decide to set up explosives in preparation for a siege. Meanwhile, Mills keeps getting flashes of images of Cutbill and Drifter before the SAR killed them. She later tells Books about the EMP device and her plan to go to the SAR leader and then detonate it. Books, on the other hand, dislikes her plan since he knows that even if they survive the explosion, the device will wipe her memory clean. Mills pursues Books with the plan because they have no other option. She also tells him that the robots did not kill them because they are pushing them to get to that location and giving them days to set up before the robots attack. Hence, she needs to try to use the EMP device because they have no chance of winning in that battle. Then, Books agrees, but he tells Mills to stay away from the device and that they will plan to detonate it without her in there. The next day, the drones attack the building, so the gang begins to prepare for the upcoming battle. Robinson will be the sniper on the roof, Books will be on the battlefield, Goodwin will take charge of the explosives and detonating the EMP device, and Mills will use her ability to report on what the entire robots are doing. The team is able to carry out its strategy, destroying more than half of the drones. 
They are now on the last part of their plan, which is to detonate the EMP when the leader comes, but now that the monitoring drone spot Goodwin, they have to modify their strategy. The robots are swarming him, so the team needs to rescue him. Books goes to get him while Robinson takes cover but is soon shot and killed in the ensuing gunfight. Book's tactics to save Goodwin, on the other hand, work, but they accidentally drop the detonator, so Books goes out to get the detonator but is cornered by the firing AIs, causing Mills to intervene. As SAR-003 approaches the team, Mills prepares to detonate and insists on staying despite Books telling her to run because she cannot go near the device. SAR-003 then orders a drone to shoot at her, she detonates the EMP, rendering her and the drone inoperable. After a while, the SAR unit reawakens and attacks Mills and Books. As a result of the gunshot, Mills cannot fight back, while Books has no ammunition left. Mills then decides to go and get Robinson's rifle in the building, controls it, and destroys the SAR unit. However, the SAR transferred its program to her before it shut down, resulting in her losing consciousness. After several hours, a vehicle comes to the aid of those individuals who have made it this far. Mills finally comes to and remembers the mission plan for S.A.R-003 just as Books and Goodwin get closer to the aircraft. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.